so hello viewers welcome to the next session of the pneumonia lesson series so today i'll be discussing the in succession to the uh, series of pneumonia lessons so the next topic as i have already told in my previous video that it is it will be about the clinical features and the clinical manifestations what are seen in the patients of pneumonia so while looking at the clinical manifestations what are seen in the patients of pneumonia it comprises of basically the disease of the uh, the pneumonia the clinical manifestations it can be in the form of the disease can be of a sudden onset or it can be insidious so the disease can be of a sudden onset or it can be insidious insidious actually means that the disease can be slowly progressing so if the disease the clinical manifestations can be in the form of a sudden onset sudden onset can occur or the disease can be insidious all right so sudden onset means the disease can occur very suddenly and uh, the disease can be if it is a slowly progressing phenomena then that it can be called as the insidious phenomena so the, the disease can be of a sudden onset or it can be insidious now students when looking at the clinical features of pneumonia so the clinical manifestations can be subdivided into two broad categories that is the typical manifestations what are seen and the other symptoms so the typical manifestations of pneumonia include the first and the most important clinical feature it is of the fever with chills so the patients who are experiencing pneumonia they can have fevers and with rigors or chills so rigors or fevers or chills can be seen in the patients of pneumonia now moving on to the next important symptom that is the typical manifestation it is of cough so the patients who are having pneumonia the cough has to be the most distinguishing feature the most distinguishing feature of pneumonia is cough that is this cough can be either in the form of productive cough or it can be in the form of non productive cough in my previous video i have already told you that in, in typical pneumonia and the atypical pneumonia in which it is the cough is present and the other one in which the cough non productive cough is present so whereas uh, just a quick look at that that in typical pneumonia in typical pneumonia since the secretions are increased in the alveoli of the lungs so there occurs the productive cough and where the interstitium is involved where the interstitium is going to have the secretions their non productive cough can be seen all right the next hallmark or the clinical feature the clinical manifestation of pneumonia is the pleuritic chest pain so the patients who have pneumonia they may complain of a kind of a chest pain which is from the pleura the pleura is the surrounding um, surrounding uh, tissues as surrounding layer the surrounding uh, soft covering around the lungs which is known as the pleura so the pleura so the pleuritic chest pain can be seen and moving on to the next important and the most distinguishing feature that is that is breathlessness so the patient may complain of shortness of breath or breathlessness can occur moving on to the other symptoms so the other symptoms in what are there what includes is basically the patient may complain of headache there can be nausea there can vomiting be occurring di diarrhea altered sensorium can occur along with myalgia that is the muscle pain and the next important clinical feature is arthralgia that is the patient can have joint pain as well so these are the top 11 these 11 features can be looked upon when examining a patient of pneumonia so now moving on to the severity of pneumonia so the severity of pneumonia is better can be better remembered if we just remember the 3 a's and the 2 x's so what are the 3 a's what i have made the mnemonic or the short trick what i have made over here is of the 3 a's and the 2 h so whether the pneumonia the patient who is suffering from pneumonia whether it is severe or not it can be assessed by these 3 a's and 2 h 
The first A, that is A, refers to acidosis. So the patients, the blood, their uh, blood level may show increase in the acidosis. Acidosis can occur in the blood. Next is azotemia, that is the patient's blood nitrogen level is in elevated. Third, the most important, the third A of the three A's refers to the altered mentation, that is the patient's altered level of uh, mental uh, level can occur, that is the patient may be in a state of confusion. Moving on to the two H, the first H corresponds to the hypoxia and the next H corresponds to the hyponatremia. So these are, the, if these features or symptoms are being seen, the severity of pneumonia can be assessed. Now, when the patient comes to the OPD, so whether the patient can be treated as the outpatient department, outpatients can be treated as an outpatient or whether the patient is to be hospitalized. So these two things are better decided by just considering the curve criteria. So this curve criteria has to be taken into account. So whether the patient is to be taken as an outpatient or whether the patient is to be hospitalized. So the curve criteria decides whether the patient should be treated as an outpatient or whether the patient is to be hospitalized. So the first C of the curve refers to confusion. Next. So the patient, if it is he's exhibiting confusion, the next U stands for the blood urea nitrogen. That is the blood urea nitrogen. So if the blood urea nitrogen of the patient is elevated more than 20 milligrams per deciliter, so the patient needs to be hospitalized. Moving on to the third R of the curve, that is CURB, the R of the curve refers to the respiratory rate. So if the patient is going to have respiratory rate greater than 30, so the patient, it means that the patient's respiratory rate has increased. That is the severity of pneumonia is much higher. So and the fourth B of the curve refers to the blood pressure. So the blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 and the diastolic is less than 60. It is another criteria and 65. If the patient is having an age above 65 years of age, that is above 65 years of age. So the patient can be thought of to be giving hospitalization. So if any of these two criteria are that are fulfilled in a particular patient, it means that the patient needs to be hospitalized. So the severity of the severity is indicated by the acidosis, azotemia, altered mentation, and the 2H that is the hypo, hypo, hypoxia and the hyponatremia and uh, whether the patient needs to be taken as an outpatient or to be hospitalized can be looked upon by the curve criteria that is the curve 65. So these are the conditions whether if any of the two conditions of the curve criteria are being fulfilled, the patient needs to be hospitalized. So viewers, this was about the clinical manifestations of pneumonia. In the upcoming videos of the pneumonia, like the next lesson, the next lecture series, I'm discussing about the different serological tests and the different medications, what are to be given in pneumonia. So the viewers, if you do like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated about my newer videos. Thank you for watching.